Hello, and welcome to Credit Matters TV. Today we're speaking with analyst Laura Kuffler McDonald about S&P's recently published Charter School Medians Report for Fiscal 2014. This report covers 253 publicly rated charter schools, ranging from small single site schools with a headcount of 200 to large school systems with headcounts of over 25,000. Welcome, Laura. Thank you, Jessica. So, Laura, could you first start by uh, giving us a, an overview of the ratings in the sector? Sure. As you mentioned, we have about 250 public charter school ratings, and the ratings range reflects the general characteristics of the sector. And what I mean by that is that charter schools tend to have small operations and thin margins and slim balance sheets. So about two-thirds of public charter school ratings are either triple B minus or double B plus, and we expect that to continue. It also um, reflects the self-selecting nature of these ratings. Most new ratings begin as confidential ratings, and many choose not to take their ratings public unless the rating is double B plus or higher. We also have another 10% of ratings rated uh, above triple B minus and 24% rated below double B plus. Most of our universe maintains a stable outlook with about 75% of credits stable. Negative outlooks, though, account for 20% and continue to significantly outpace positive outlooks. So that should give you a quick snapshot of the ratings in the sector. What are some of the more notable findings or themes in this year's report? Findings from this year's median analysis have been positive. This year we saw growth in enrollment, margins, and cash. We saw strong enrollment growth across the rating categories, which we believe was fueled primarily by good academic performance and increased demand in many charter schools. We also saw excess margins increase across all rating categories, and we credit this to the combination of improving state funding and the increase in enrollment, which have allowed for growth in total revenues. And then lastly, um, from the improved margins and funding environment, cash levels have increased year over year at most schools. So certain states, um, primarily Minnesota and California, were able to return to normal distributions after several years of state holdbacks. So uh, the number of public ratings continues to grow in the sector. I believe we added 40 ratings in uh, this past, past year. Uh, where does the majority of the growth come from? Um, yeah, so currently we rate schools in 24 states and the District of Columbia, and this year we added two new states, Missouri and South Carolina. The biggest growth in ratings has occurred in states where guarantee programs are in place. These states include Colorado, Texas, and Utah, where qualifying schools with an investment grade underlying rating may receive an enhanced rating based on the state's credit enhancement program. We've also seen growth in areas where the political and funding environment has become more favorable in recent years. So as I previously mentioned, the reduction or elimination in state holdbacks in areas like Minnesota had a significant impact on school balance sheets. Additionally, the governor of California also signed into law a new funding formula allocating more dollars to schools with a larger portion of disadvantaged children which we view positively because many charters serve an underprivileged student population. So the financial flexibility provided by these legislative changes allow charter schools to better position themselves to access the capital markets. Great. Thank you for your time, Laura. And thanks for watching Credit Matters TV. To read more about this report, please go to our website.